Siobhan is on the line and going to be joining us now uh, from Akinta, who, who's been known to grow a bit of food and might have something to say about farming. Good morning to you, Siobhan. You would have heard our comments there um, about uh, farmers and um, how important it is to value the work they do. Um, uh, have we seen any tractors rolling through Salia uh, de Porto yet? Any tractors? Yes. So, any the bay isn't blocked, I take it, this morning. Yeah. Um, actually, I haven't been down to the bay, so I have no idea what's going on down there. Um, but I think it's interesting what you guys are talking about in farming. Yeah, here at the Quinto, we do produce a little bit for ourselves, um, but not much more than that. And uh, what Abby was saying about soils, soils is, as we do have very rich soils here in Portugal, we also struggle with soils in Portugal. So um, here at the Quinto, <laughs> thanks to uh, my fellow friend there, my best friend behind me, as you can see, <laughs> there. Um, oh, we've we managed the horse, to, right? The horse. Uh, we've managed yeah. to change a lot of our soil, enrich it with his uh, his valuable horse manure, um, which has changed a lot. And yeah, for the grocery stores and all of it, I mean, you're right. There's nothing to say, right? There's certain things that aren't balanced yet. And agricultural production, hopefully... Hopefully, Portuguese products will get more support. And they won't turn too chemical, too forced, and uh, see where we're going. But uh, yeah. we're actually lucky because I, I do see changes when it comes to the, the grocery shops. Like, we're on a plan where they um, donate, Auchan from Caldish donates all their fruits and vegetables that cannot be consumed by humans any longer. They come off the shelf, they all come to us. Um, so that's always good. And then whatever's not consumed by the animals goes back in the soil. So I think on, on a small scale, lots of farmers are trying to do the little things. Obviously, this isn't our pref profession, so it's not the same. Um, but still, you know, everyone's trying and hopefully we'll keep the Portuguese heritage nice and pure and, and healthy. It's very, so important. it's very important to this culture, isn't it, farming? So let's let's see what we can do to support the farmers. And it's a complex... Yeah, that, that's actually a very good point, because one of the things that was a trend internationally was to have these huge productions that tend to be highly dependent on chemicals. And that's not a huge thing in, Por in Portugal. I mean, there are some huge uh, hectares of farmland, especially in Alentejo, and usually very focused on olives. But overall, we are, I think we are still very balanced when it comes to chemical use. And for example, Brazil, like you were saying, exporting to Brazil, and I do have a tight relationship with Brazil and go there every year. And one of the things that really bothers me in Brazil is exactly the quality of food, like food and vegetables, how unnatural they are and how different the flavor is and it literally tastes like chemicals in most of the cases and as a Portuguese person that grew up even in a farm where I could even climb the trees and eat uh, the fruits directly from there Wonderful. it's just I never only when I became an adult I realized how much of a privilege that is yeah well why would you you well, would you would would you if that's what you grow up with that's what you think is normal and you make a really good point about Brazil and that's presumably why this is a wonderful company um, it's the uh, Pomar de Marialva, uh, just outside Caldas de Reña, and uh, met with the family who've been growing. Um, they've had orchards for, I think, three or four generations. And their big business opportunity is exporting to Brazil. And you can't blame them for that. I mean, it's, 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 it's kind of insane in another way, isn't it, that we are flying through around the world in the way that we are. Um, but you can't, and for the reasons you've given, Anna, you know, if, if there's massive um, technological agriculture going on in Brazil, as I re recall when I was in California, big fruit, great looking fruit, but with no taste. It's all kind of... Yeah, and another thing is that those tend to be very intensive cultures that often yes. completely ruin the soils. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Because so, they don't really also, do the crop rotation. Yeah, yeah. Carl, well said. Carl, I think that's also, you know, as you know, um, for, for our nonprofit, for our uh, project that we have here on Aquinta, we work a lot with the younger generation. And for me, that's my biggest concern is that, you know, great. We have these farmers that have been going on for generations and generations that are doing amazing things, but we've got to get the younger generations involved and realize how it's not just a, a game. We're not just doing this to play outside. It's also because what are we going to do in the future? 
Well said. There's, yeah, very, well there's said. very few younger generations, and that's what we need is the younger generation to kick in and start taking over those farms, um, being involved, learning the traditions, you know, learning how you can do it without just a speedy chemical process. And that, for me, is my biggest concern is the next generation. What are we doing to help that next generation to keep these traditions? And this is all over the world, not only Portugal, but preserving the land and creating our food, but in a in a healthy way. Well said. Well said. And I think one of and the big that, issues for me, is the on biggest that. concern. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For, for us, the young generation, I think that one of the big things is how labor intensive that is and how little yeah. monetary reward that is for that kind of That's work. Right. Like, That's exactly the I problem. Have, uh, I have a bunch of lands that are inherited from my father and these are very fertile lands. These are very good lands in uh, um, Aveiro area. And I looked into developing uh, bio farming projects and so on. And overall, I ended up giving up on it because even the agricultural engineer that I consulted at the time, he was like, okay, you should probably do the chemical at the start because there's a very high risk of losing the whole crop. And until the crops are grown, uh, it's better not to do bio and uh, only start uh, doing bio after everything is secure. And then even with the um, the incentive programs for uh, um, rural development and crop development and so on, it still required a fairly heavy investment and the return is very slow. It takes a lot of years to get return on it. And then it also required for uh, one of us, so we are three brothers, to be um, full time on that and also be on um, like a training program sponsored by the government and so on. Wow. So overall, I, I it's not that I think it's a bad thing. It's just that it ends up not making a lot of sense to a lot of people because of how slow everything is. And it's like you have to put a lot of money and you only start seeing it back like five to ten years after. Yeah, for the sure. Is, and I think, sorry, Carl, go ahead. Yeah, this is a well, subject. I'll just, I'll just, just, yeah, I think it's a great subject to be talking about. Um, and it's, it, it doesn't make sense in an insane society, does it? With the values we've got, the, the this is the problem is characterized as it's too much work for too little money. And that's based on the values of our society, isn't it? Whereas if you look at it from the point of view of how wholesome it is from a bigger perspective to be growing food for people and for people to be involved in growing food and growing the food they eat and their families eat and their communities eat. That and makes it's not just that. Of sense. <laughs> it's also the whole available capital. Like young people, they tend not to have a lot of disposable capital. So it's very hard for us to invest, like let's say 10,000, 30,000 into something that we will only be seeing back five to 10 years later. Right, absolutely. And again, that's, you know, that's how economics work in our culture, right? In a longer sighted, if you thought seven generations ahead, that would be a blink of an eye, wouldn't it? But if you think half a generation ahead or to next week, that makes no sense at all. Siobhan, sorry, I interrupted you. Go ahead. No, 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 no. It's good. It's interesting. It's, it's a subject we could talk for hours and hours and hours about. And I think it's all about... Uh, it's all about sustainability and sustainability means also, you know, that it's sustainable for us human beings. Yeah. Um, sustainability is not only people thinking about, yeah, we're going to plant the perfect bio plant. No, it's, it's called, re we should be doing reasonably reasonable farming. So sometimes there are chemicals involved, I yeah. think, uh, for it to be sustainable and then find a way that it can be sustainable for everybody. But that means living also for young people, giving them chances, not just young people, everybody. Yeah, um, yeah. Today, that's, you know, when people talk about us, like at the Quinta, yes, we're a permaculture farm. Yes, we don't use any chemicals. We do our very best. But, you know, I still drive a diesel truck. Why do I drive a diesel truck? Because I cannot, I don't have the means to drive a non-diesel truck. So every time I go down to the beach and I clean, I don't know how many thousands of kilos of plastic, and then I drive back up the road with my diesel truck, and everyone says, well, why are you doing that? And I said, because that's all I can sustain at this point. I don't have other options. If I had other options, I would do it. And I think people don't realize that that's exactly what we're all talking about is it has to be sustainable for everybody. And sustainable means that everybody has to live as well. So Yeah, well yeah. Said. and well economic said. sustainability, I think it's one of the big problems on agriculture in Portugal because there is none. Exactly. 
the, and that's the, where the, the support is needed. Yeah, the, the prognosis is not a good one, and, and this is understandable why the farmers are protesting um, and uh, why, we, why we might support them. Uh, many of our farmers worldwide, says Michael, live on small margins. I met a pig farmer two weeks ago who lost everything during COVID. This is very sad, isn't it? He ended up killing half of his uh, 4,000 uh, hogs there. Now he drives a cab. Um, yeah. I believe the cooperative movement started in Rochdale in the 19th century, and I think it's alive and well, fair to say, here in Portugal, at least for the time being, Pam. Part of the problem rests on the hypermarkets, the larger supermarkets, as they impose prices and rules on farmers. They take yes. their production, but for a very small profit and sell it very expensive. And of course, we play our part in that because we don't want to pay too much for food necessarily. Uh, Refood, Alcabasa and probably others donate any food not suitable for human consumption for animals. Reducing food waste is one of their main principles. That's fantastic. Pam and Pam works over there. Uh, we have an agricultural school in Alcabasa that does a lot of good work. And no one wants to do physical work. We want to sit at a desk all day and then go to the gym to get fit. <laughs> no, that's not true at Akinta, is it? This weekend, if you want to get fit, cleaning the beach, as uh, Siobhan was talking about. Um, Carl, please, uh, Pamela, please reach out to us. If you have programs <laughs> or things that are for young children, you know, we're fighting on our end to get the kids involved. And it's not just to be farmers or in agriculture professionally, but to, under, you know, more and more people are buying land out here. Why in Portugal? Just to have a tiny little place to grow their own fruits and vegetables. You know that, Carl. Have your own eggs. Um <laughs> You know, the more stuff we do all together, we help each other out. I think, you know, there we can we can make our little difference. And yes, beach clean this weekend. I'm making brunch and then beach clean. And everyone's really lucky because the tide's low at three o'clock. So uh, we have time for brunch and nobody has to wake up at six o'clock in the morning to come clean the beach with me. Um, everyone's <laughs> welcome. You can sign up online because um, yeah. that's why most people don't come is because I get up too early. Uh, but oh, yeah, it should be fun on for, for, should be fun on on Sunday. We'll see you there, Carly. The, uh, <laughs> oh, that's that's put me on the spot, isn't it? Fantastic. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. That's this, that's this coming Sunday, isn't it? And the link for that that's on our um, lovesndp.com uh, San Martino de Porto website. I'll just put the link for that um, into the chat. But that's a great shout. So you can get brunch, and then do you, is it brunch before or after the beach clean? Brunch is at eleven. Yeah. And then we'll be heading down to the beach all together. And it's going to be at the main beach, um, starting in Salir at the dunes and then heading around the bay. Uh, we're doing that to make sure it's a very accessible beach clean because sometimes I'm known for taking people a little bit um, on the harder beaches. So I, you know, everyone's <laughs> welcome. You can bring your kid. Uh, my so cousin's coming who, who is special needs. So, you know, we've really made it. So this Sunday, it's really a family and event and uh, oh. everybody can do it. You don't have to have special hiking shoes or anything. You and local legends. So it's not beach clean boot camp. It's, a, it's an easier yeah, one. No, 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 no. This is BBC beach brunch clean. So, yeah, it should be nice. Get everybody right. together. And you've been busy. Savvy Cat Anna's going to love this. I, I, I didn't realize you hadn't met before. So uh, Siobhan over at Aquinta Salir de Porto and Savvy Cat Anna Caramujo uh, here. I thought you might have known each other from before. Um, th this you'll like, I think, Anna. Um, this is something that Siobhan's doing at the mm -hmm. uh, print on demand part of the operation. The Silver Coast Cattery. You've been organizing some rather nice decalization. Is that what you call it? <laughs> Are these yeah, decals? yeah, that's our that's the car we just finished. Very happy. Now, just it's to explain so people understand, it's nothing to do with the Quinta. Uh, when I try and explain people to people what the Quinta is, the Quinta is a non-profit organization that we started, an association. Um, it's kind of I'm not very religious, so um, this is my church. Okay, we it's something we're passionate about, so that's the Quinta project. And then my business on the side is. Um, is a printing company that we've started and as you see the cattery were had their car done this week by us so it's uh we're pretty proud of it it took quite a few yeah. hours and so um that's what we're doing and yes the on the printing side of things we're getting very very busy doing t-shirts sweatshirts branding for people cars signage shop fronts a little bit of everything and our big thing is really like working with the customers directly because obviously yeah. there's a lot of online stuff that you can go direct, but ours is really a customer service thing. So from the beginning, A to Z, run around to Lisbon, everywhere. So yeah, that, that's that's the print. So Carl oh, knows he has a few mugs, and I have a box oh, yeah. of mugs I have to do for you, Carl, as well. 
So, so yeah, my, this is where I get my mugs from these days. Not flying them all over the world, but just around the corner on the other side of the bay. So, Sandy well, Cat, you could you could think that's funny that we're actually doing a print business. So obviously, we're using a lot of vinyl as well. So um, once again, it's a sustainability thing, and we do offer an eco-friendly uh, printing source, and we are doing organic cottons and recyclable uh, plastics, et cetera. But um, once again, we try and do our best not to waste and serve the customer what they need with a product that lasts a long time. That's it. Superb. Yeah. Excellent stuff. Um, so I'm going to be going and doing a few more um, events listings um, after we've said goodbye this morning. But it'd be great just to, to get some final words from you as we head into the weekend and answer a few, just a couple more questions and, and comments here. Um, we've got, uh, there's also a Fruta Feia, the Ugly Fruit, a cooperative that yeah. sells ugly fruit and veggies that supermarkets refuse for how it looks, but it's perfectly fine. And they sell it cheap for the public. So that's Ugly Fruit. And hi to the lovely horse behind Siobhan. What's your horse's name, Siobhan? Oh, he's looking straight at us. He's hungry. Um, oh. but, yeah, he's actually a Portuguese Lusitano. I don't know if you can see, but he's a bit, he's he likes magnetic. to be muddy. He's a chic horse, but he likes to be as muddy as, he's like me. His name is Veron, which is a Spanish name. So his breeder was French and gave my Portuguese horse a Spanish name. His name is Varon, like Varon. Oh. Yeah. So we've had to deal with some of the the ego problems we've had because of that, because he's actually put <laughs> So um, he's got an identity he, crisis. He has traveled around the world with me. Um, his parents were Portuguese. He, he, I bought him in France off a breeder. My friends took him to England with me, and when we decided to come back to Portugal, that was the only condition: was that my horse, we could afford to bring the horse back first. So then yeah. he traveled in luxury and we traveled in not so much luxury. So he goes <laughs> everywhere. He is, he goes. Is a, he's home, isn't he? He's in his spiritual home as a Lusitana. He completely is. And even his health and everything, it just balanced out. And people think I'm crazy. But the minute he got here, he's much more rustic. He's much happier. He goes on the beach with me when we're allowed, of course, before we cause an uproar in the winter. He lives <laughs> with goats. Um, and he's a very he's a very happy chap, and he loves it because every time we ride in the market, the market ladies always run out to give him apples. So he's like, and now he has, he's a main a big part of his uh, food now is actually fruits and veggies coming off the market from Auchan. So that's great. Wow! And he lives well, with all the goats. He's, he's living in He's, he's li living an enviable diet that a lot of humans here would like, I think. Yeah, by the yeah, yeah. Dad, yeah. Pamela, if you earn money on the end of a call center line, uh, then killing yourself a farm, what's the attraction? Young people also associate yeah. the countryside with a hard life. Yep. Yet the happiest and friendliest people I've ever met are at peace on their farms, as I am. Siobhan, there are other options, but I'm yet to get an electric tractor. Um, and uh, share the poster, and I will share it in my group, says Pam. So I'll do that for sure. And just finally, uh, Siobhan, where is that cattery that uh, is being uh, advertised on the back of the van? That in you did the the which is just outside of um, Kaldish. Oh, so yeah. actually, and if you look on the, one of those pictures, if you yep. scan the QR code, we're very proud of it. <laughs> Oh, it works sad. really, really well. So when cars behind, so um, it's run by Yana and Neil, and they're really wonderful, wonderful people. And I've promised that my little cats that run around here on the farm, if they ever do have to go away, they will go to them because it's just it looks really cozy and they look after them so well. So strongly recommended that service and glad they're around. So it's a cat spa, really, as much as a, a cattery, by the sound of it. Yeah, sometimes I want to book into these places. You know, when you go there yeah. and you think, God, I wouldn't mind like a few days here, a little weekend here, chill out kind of thing. It's not like that I'm horse, not isn't it? It, You know, if people could go to the Kinter and be fed fruit and veg for two days in the sunshine there. Yes. <laughs> Carl, stop. You know, there's a lot of people that try and try and... Uh, I thought when I would live on the farm, there'd be no, low, you know, no rooms and bedrooms for my friends and family to come. So they wouldn't come too often. Okay, yeah, fair but, enough. Fair um, enough. Yeah, they've all they all love it, so they all still show up and find a way to spend weeks and stuff here, and it's it's good fun. Yeah, we love it. Everyone chills out at the farm. All right, wonderful. So, Siobhan, your invitation there, of course, to uh, join you for the beach clean and brunch. Uh, that's uh, this Sunday, February the fourth. And did you say eleven a.m. start? Uh, for 11 that. AM, yeah and actually we have a lot of new people coming which is nice because obviously we're in a so so we're all private members but we always open up our events to newcomers as well 
So it's always nice. We meet all kinds of people from all over and uh, different ages, everything. So I'm looking forward to this Sunday because there's a lot of new people that I've, I've never met before. Oh, excellent. So good way to, to meet new people if you're new to the yeah. Bay and new to the Silver Coast. That's lovely. Um, so that's you. Anything else you want to add before you go this morning? You know what? I don't really know. Um, no, have a wonderful weekend, everybody, and uh, stay positive. Enjoy this sunshine because I think we're extremely lucky. And yeah, and Savvy Cat, I hope we'll meet in person soon because I, I, I've actually, after our last uh, radio session together, I did do a little research. So nice. Good job. Keep it up. Oh, thank thank you. You. And yeah, I'd love to pop by, but I'm actually stuck in Porto for a while. I'm actually having yeah. surgery on uh, uh, Monday. It's a major oh, no. surgery, but it's uh, uh, something that I, I chose optional. So uh, it will take me a while to recover, and I will probably only drop by again by Caldas, like in March or so, like end of March. Well, bless you, and good luck with that, um, Anna. Yeah. Um, hope, hope, hope that goes well for you. Do you have some parting words for us, as well as a, a bon fin semana this weekend, as we go into what's going to be, I think, quite an excitable 2024? Um, and just maybe give us a final view on uh, real estate. Yeah, I guess, uh, given the topic, I would like to say that I'd love to help any expats that I were looking to set up their farms in uh, uh, Portugal uh, yes. to set them up because what a like great I, said, idea. I did grow up yes. on the farm and I, I do know basically how it works even though I don't have that much practical experience <laughs> well I think the intention and the willingness and what you obviously know about growing up on farms would go a long way and it is you know it's I think it is a matter of networking this isn't it because there are a lot of people who want that life they don't know where to begin and there are a lot of people who've lived that life who think you want to do what Really? Well, okay. I can, I can, I can help with that. So I, I, I would say that I would love to do that life if I didn't have to worry about uh, financial sustainability. Yes. But so there's an op- from there's a financial an sustainability there. point, like if I didn't have to work, uh, worry about money, I would be happily setting up a farm. But unfortunately the money side of things is not sustainable. Well, I've heard that's why Bill Gates is buying all this land up so that he can give it to people so that they can live that sort of lifestyle that we're talking about, maybe. Go on, mm-hmm. Siobhan. <laughs> no, I just want to say, but um, there, there's a huge market, let's not forget, about hobby farming. They we're not all talking about big farming. Um, and I think a lot of people are you know, moving to Portugal for a certain lifestyle and you know you could really help people out finding smaller pieces of land because farming goes from you know seven thousand square meters up kind of thing could be smaller so i think there's a huge i get called often often try and help people as much as i can that are setting up that buy small pieces of lands they want to put one horse on it three goats i normally advise them like you know what goats not to buy which ones you know what they're gonna live and there you don't need to have a lot of mo- that you don't need to pump in a lot of money you just need to set it up really well and have a good uh a good um kind of daily plan on how you work and stuff like that so i think yeah, you have a huge market my, my of people that are looking for hobby farms are very much like that you know just uh, they have their own crops and we have a bunch exactly. of chickens and ducks and yeah, so on exactly. in that farm but it's nothing to sell it's just for our own family exactly. use. But there's a lot of people looking for that kind of stuff. And for, for Portuguese people, that's normal. All everyone's grandparents had that. Yes. You know, it's normal to grow your cabbages. You don't, you know, to buy your soup and so and a lot of people are coming in here and that's what they're looking at is is a small piece of land that they can uh do something on it. So I think, you know, if you can help people out there, you're gonna have a lot of people ringing I would on your door. So, yeah, I I would do, I'd do anything I possibly could to help that. I think it's really important that we keep that alive here in Portugal and bring new people into it. Um, and it's like I say, it's just a matter of making the connections, I think, because the will is there, isn't it? The insight, the knowledge is all there. The culture is there. It's just a matter of like a big switchboard and plugging in yeah. the right people to the right situation. Colleen, I always appreciate your insights and knowledge on the show. Obrigada from, uh, from uh, <laughs> Colleen to you. And yes, good luck uh, with, with the surgery, Anne, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. So bon fin semana to, to you both. And yeah, let's make this happen. Let's, let's keep talk, having this conversation and living this saner way of life that I think we're all talking about. And anyone anyone who has got um, this, you know, is, who's into this Portuguese way of life. Yeah, and people around. will probably be surprised because uh, farms are often cheaper than apartments in Lisbon. 
<laughs> well, there you go. There's another. And, and, and you know, there are so many people who will probably take care of your farm for you. That's another scheme and project that I saw earlier on this week. There are people who want to do the work and there are people who want to own the farm. That, although that sounds like old fashioned actually, that's something I should look into because I actually do have the farm and it's not doing anything right now. So, because oh, uh, you just, you're gonna be so busy today, everyone's gonna be calling you. Awesome. <laughs> call me first, call me first because I may have a plan for you. <laughs> okay, excellent, excellent. Awesome. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I gotta go, bye. There she goes. And there goes Anna as well. That was been superb this morning. Uh, what a fantastic conversation. How lovely. Uh, very quickly then, a few events that are going on around the country, uh, mainly in the Bagada region. Uh, that's not an event that's going on around the country, but uh, a nice picture from the James Webb Telescope latest pictures of Uranus. Uh, their evening meal and traditional fado in Martaid. Uh, on the 3rd, that's, of course, tomorrow. Uh, thank you very much, Bagandi, for these. All of them available on the Gumpa map over on our website, goodmorningportugal.com. Festival, the Sopos, a soup festival at the Fat Farm, the Quinta de Gordo in Bairada. That's on Sunday. And we've also got a dinner party in Amoreira de Gandara. Uh, that's uh, tomorrow. Come and join in this traditional dinner party in the lovely village of Amoreira de Gandara. All of these are a lovely reason to go up to the Bairada district. I was talking to young Ben Austin about the Bairada. He visited a uh, the Cooperativo de Cantaneda, I think, talking to a fantastic wine producer who may join us on one of the shows or the Good Morning Portugal Wine Club one Monday evening. Rota das Adegas, their communal evening dinner party in Ancash, Bairada, and uh, Carnival in Meliada as well. That's a big one, isn't it? That's going to be the 3rd to the 13th in Meliada, where, which is, of course, the home of uh, the delightful, uh, exquisite suckling pig, uh, along with uh, Bairada. The red sparkling Espermant over there. Uh, Carnival in Estareja as well. Yeah, carnival season. We're moving into that. Carnival in Oliveira de Bairro. Fantastic. Nice one, Andy. And Carnival in Ovar Aveiro as well. So lots of fabulous events. Uh, Feste in Amoreira do Repolão in Oliveira de Bairro. And finally then Festa in Levira Barrada as well. All of them available over at goodmorningportugal.com. Have a superb weekend. Um, take care and bye for now. We'll see you on Monday. I believe it's Tig James, isn't it? Along with Monday, where we'll be picking up more, I think, on the immigration fatigue idea that he introduced with us last Monday. And the great Tig James. Tig James, MBE. Bon fin semana. Have a great day and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you. Bye for now. Bom dia, Portugal. In Portugal. There's a YouTube show Full of fun facts you need to know Carl brings a bell and the members show To the GMP morning show Featured guests will come and they will blow your mind The audience will do so in kind a little vanity mixed with some insanity On the morning show with GMP Good morning Portugal and I'd like to welcome you to another fantastic day Hey you gumpers